Blessed be the whole Trinity, Trinity, Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is on the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you serve us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by the same, our own sins, and the broken system of our hands. We turn to our victim to the power of our We distrust those who are not us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider the grace of our hands. Forgive us, dear God.
giver of goodness. Your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
first reading is from Genesis chapter 1. Out of chaos, God brings order. Out of the formless void, God brings light. The familiar story is good news for the Israelites who experienced much chaos in their history. It remains good news for us. God created and continues to create new life. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read responsibly Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of the God's name. Worship the Lord and the beauty of all us. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is the voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon shit like a fire, and not burn like a bell on our hearts. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits on the throne of the Lord. The Lord sits on the throne of the Lord. The Lord sits on the throne of the Lord. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessing of peace. The second reading is from Acts chapter 19. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who had received John's baptism of repentance, but had never heard of the Holy Spirit or of baptism in the name of Jesus. After Paul baptizes them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with gifts of the Spirit. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord.
Lord with Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark's Gospel reports the story of Jesus' baptism with some iron, the one on whom the Spirit descends, is himself the one who will baptize with others with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Mark writes, John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole of Judea and countryside, and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the throng of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came down from heaven. You are my son, beloved. You am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Praise to you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ of God. <clears throat> the text is this gospel for the day. Let's pray. Father, grant that what we say with our lips when we believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts do we show forth in the way we live our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, as you're already aware, today we remember the baptism of Jesus. And whether you're a long-time church member or you're seeking to discover more about Christianity, most folks have heard the word baptism. Some people prefer to event, uh, refer to the event as Christmas, which has the word Christ in it. But regardless of the word you use, it's associated with a special church ritual for babies as soon as they're born, or for adults of any age, for that matter, who have come to believe. Now, there's a whole lot about baptism that's worth thinking about. They happen a lot, once for every Christian, anyway. We follow certain procedures to prepare for it. Remember, there are conversations with the pastor. A uh, date is set when family and friends can be present for the service, and the uh, sponsors are sometimes called godparents are selected. And maybe there's a class to attend to, meet, to know about the meeting of baptism. And then on the day of the baptism, there's an air of excitement. I mean, during the service, in some kind of the children are invited to come up and view right there what's going on with that new baby being baptized. The parents of the baby are <laughs> frequently nervous that their child was too noisy during the baptism, you know, or fussy. And the godparents are proud to have been asked to be sponsors. Well, the grandparents sit in the pew uh, pretty much up front and uh, take hundreds of pictures, of course, uh, after the service. Of course, there is the baby who is the center of attention, whether asleep or awake, whether quiet or screaming, right? Important words are said during the baptismal service, like, do you promise to fulfill these obligations? We do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We welcome you into the Lord's family, and so on. There's also significant actions that are part of baptism. The splashing of the water, of course, the sign of the cross, the lighting of the candle, and the anointing with oil. No matter how many baptisms we, we have, each one is a special occasion. Not even the most loudly crying baby can mar the event. In fact, sometimes it makes it more interesting. Well, you think that's how the Bible would have described Jesus' baptism. 
as important as baptism is and as important as Jesus is, you'd think his baptism would have been rich with religious ceremony. However, Mark devotes only three short verses to it. No, no mention about the words uh, said or the promises made. No mention uh, about sponsors, no sign of the cross, no anointing, no baptismal candle. Uh, only a vision and a voice. And the vision was of splitting the heavens wide open. But wait, there's no mention of that great golden shaft of light zeroing in on Jesus' head. And there's only the appearance of the Lord, a simple dove. That, uh, you know, and then the voice, hear my son, the beloved, and you I am well pleased. Of course, John the Baptist did not have the book of worship at Jesus' baptism like we do today, nor was Jesus dressed in that, you know, that white robe that was worn by his parents at their baptism. But when all is said and done, that dove and the voice tell the story of what baptism is really about. A vision and a voice, just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens split open and God's Spirit descending like a dove on him. The only time in the entire Bible that God's Spirit is identified with a dove is at the baptism of Jesus. And yet, for well over 2,000 years, the descending dove has been the church's most widely used symbol of God's Holy Spirit. That tells us something about the importance of its appearance at Jesus' baptism. So what was the vision? It was a vision of God's very own presence. A vision of the immediacy of God first. God's Spirit. The dove appearance said in no uncertain terms that God's Spirit was right there in the middle of the event. Now the liturgy does not call for the use of live doves in a baptism. Hmm, maybe it should. But what is important is that God's Spirit is equally present today as parents and sponsors and child gather around the font. Baptism is far more than a religious ritual that we conduct for children. It's an occasion when God's Spirit is right there among us. Baptism is called a sacrament. Martin Luther described the sacrament as, a, as a, a, a visible sign of God's invisible grace and mercy and love. A visible sign. Now whether it's a baby who is presented by parents and sponsors, or, or whether it's adults who are presenting themselves as new believers to be baptized, the living God is in the middle of the people gathered there. And how do I know? Because God promised to be there. And then there's the voice. The word of the voice echoed in the Old Testament servant song of Isaiah 42, which told of the mission and purpose of life of the one who was, that they spoke. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Well, it's no easy task to bring forth justice in the world, especially what we witnessed on Wednesday or to work for an end to a human suffering, or to bring peace where there is hatred and discord. And yet, that's the mission to which every one of us is called and watched in the baptism to do. Justice does not happen naturally, of course. Peace is elusive with the conflict of human wills are involved. Human suffering is easier to ignore because of its painfulness. Those are, the, uh, those are the areas of life to which Jesus was sent, and because of our baptism, we too are sent to those areas of life to do something about them. We are to bring about healing, reconciliation, and change. And we are to bring an end to injustice and oppression. We are to care for the hungry and the homeless. We are to work It takes a special power to face those kinds of issues. 
but the voice throws us back to the vision. For the power and the vision is the power of God's very own spirit. We are not left to our own devices to do justice for God. We're given the power of God, which comes from the spirit of God. So are we good enough for the task? Are we capable enough for the task? Has God given us a mission that's beyond us? Listen to the voice again. You are my son, my daughter. With you I am pleased. I find that astounding when you think about it. God is saying that God accepts us just the way we are. And at a time when we are small, helpless, and crying maybe, at a time when we can't even say God's name, at a time when we don't even know any theology about God. What's more, God tells us that once the waters of baptism have flowed over our head, it's good for life. <laughs> what a magnificent graciousness for God to make such a promise to us right at the heart of what, before we even had the chance to botch things up and sin. Unfortunately, that's where Christians begin to, to quibble among themselves. Some say, well, they're not old enough to understand the meaning of baptism or what it's uh, doing before the promise can be given to us. <clears throat> Others say that, that uh, we can lose the promise if we don't stay on the straight and narrow. Folks, such arguments are out of focus in the wrong place. I'm convinced that when we come face to face with a love that accepts us the way we are, with no strings whatsoever at that, we cannot help but respond with the kind of gratitude which seeks to accomplish the mission which His grace, this gracious God, and wants us to do. You are my son. You are my daughter. You. With you, I am pleased. So baptism is not some kind of magic spell or death insurance policy that we can take on little children. Baptism is about life. And because baptism is an entrance into the life of Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ's church. So whether we're baptized as an infant or as an adult, in baptism we are marked as belonging to God. We baptize young children not because we're afraid the child will die. We baptize them because we want them to live in the company of God's people where they grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So I have asked you to remember the vision and voice of Jesus' baptism because it is the same voice that is present or was present in your baptism or will be present if you are in unbaptism. Always remember the words and the actions which are part of that day to remember. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this person, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Remember the sign of the cross made on your forehead with the words, Child of God, today you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Mark with the cross of Christ forever.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscience of God, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers to the Church, the world, all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders that guided by the Holy Spirit may proclaim the forgiveness of sins, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness be revealed through the creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid the strife, that God inspire all people to use their strength wisely, let us pray. For the sick and for those who provide mentally medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, especially Kelly, Cherry, Bob, Susan, Amelia, and Jay, that God sh shower compassion. Let us pray. For the congregation gathered here, for the students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily love work, that all the beloved of God's experience grace and peace. Let us pray. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed, we now rest from their labors. <clears throat> that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken and silent. For the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as God taught Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. God bless us and send us admission to the world. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, give you.
Go in peace. Be the way of the Lord of Christ. Thanks be to God.